What's going on everybody? Welcome to another edition of Axe Creation. And in this episode, we take a look at Eulogy from Tool. Eulogy is one of those classic songs. Everybody loves it. You guys have been requesting it for a long time. And I haven't given it to you, so I, my apologies. But let's do it now. So, let's jump right in, right? We are in a drop D tuning, as most of the time when playing with Tool. Okay, if you guys want to follow along with a PDF or Guitar Pro transcription of this, down in the description are the links you will need. Okay? So, like I said, we're in a drop D tuning, and the intro of the song is very developed. It takes it a long time. There's a lot of little things going on. It's tough. You know, you need everybody kind of doing little things. So, what we, I usually do is I'll play the percussive rhythm on the guitar. Uh, I think Jones plays it between the bridge and the body on a string through. Obviously this guitar doesn't have that. If your guitar doesn't have that, you could pick really close to the bridge here and you will get a very brittle type sound that you can use as, a, as the percussive noise. Okay? So this is your rhythm and this is mimicked in the guitar part in the verses as well. So you have... And that's the same rhythm we're going to find in the verse, right? So in the verse, you're playing that note on two. You're actually, instead of playing dead notes, you're playing these notes. Right? Same rhythm. You're just notes and one's dead notes. Okay? So that's what you're doing through basically the entire intro. Bass is doing a lot. Um, the vocal is doing this melody that you hear. I believe Maynard uses some little toy, I think when he did it, or some type of megaphone. But he, the, he sings that live. So, when you look at the transcription of this, that part will not be in here. But if you want to play it, right, it, the melody starts on B, or the fourth fret of your G string. And you're going to basically play third, so it's going to be four and seven. Five and nine. Back to four and seven. Two and five. Four and five here, you're going to get a little third shape. And then you can right. You kind of bend it up that half step. So have fun with that if you guys want to do that. Okay, but it's not in the in the transcription. But I wanted to go over it for you guys. Okay, so the guitar is actually going to be playing that percussive rhythm throughout, and then near the end on one of the overlay tracks, you hear the guitar kind of switch to the again that same rhythm. faint in, in, in the track. I mean, not super faint, but I mean, it's, it's faint in the background. And then you're just going to let that ring out. And then you have when the guitar track kicks in. Right? So you have a muted open. And then the two power chord. And a lot of this song is just, it's simple power chords. A lot of the song is not necessarily technically demanding on your left hand and how to play. Which, you know, it's a good song for my intermediate beginners or, or intermediate, intermediate players. Right, looking to get into the style, you need a lot of control over dynamics and tones and your your overall sound more than knowing how to play a lot of stuff with your left hand. Okay, um, like I said, it's a quick open muted note, and then the two right there, and that's going to bring you into the verse riff. So see, look, long winded, a couple of minutes. We haven't even played anything, and we're two minutes into a song already. It's a long winded intro. So now we actually start playing the guitar. <laughs> So now your verse riff, like I said before, it's going to be on two, and then you're going to play two, three, and then some open sixteenth notes, okay? And there's also going to be some percussive dead notes in there. Okay? So you have the second fret. Two, three is the steps and then open. Okay? And you're going to put a dead note in between the... Like that. Okay? So that's the verse riff. 
Verse 1 and verse 2, it's the same thing minus the dead notes or any extra little noise you get in there. That first, rip, first verse sounds more noisy. You might be adding more dead notes in there. Okay, the second, the second verse, very straightforward, very clean. No extra hits whatsoever. And also in the second verse, since we're talking about it, it, it opens up. Right, open up, big power, uh, just heavy chords, power chords, open, and just one open hit. Okay, so that's the difference between the verse riffs. Okay, and then both times that goes into the chorus, and your chorus is going to be. That's the chorus. All right, very straightforward. You're going to be O2, O2, O2. Five and nine. And then on the repeat, it's seven, nine. Right? Um, that's the chorus. Okay, you can put a little, little start and stop in there. Right there, those hits. And he's going to play seven and nine going into that, right? Because the verse stops and it's silent, and then you go. Right, you get into that. Then those notes are seven and nine. Okay, so that's the chorus. It's the same both times. Um, typical tool. The second chorus is going to add some variation to it. Very little. Um, you play the chorus, I think, four or six times. It goes through a lot. And but on the second chorus, you're gonna you're gonna when you get up to the seventh position, it actually stops. It does a little syncopation, and the whole band kind of stops, gives it, gives it a rest. So you have this. Right there, da da ba ba ba. Right, it only happens once. Okay, and then uh, again, the second time, segueing into the next parts of the songs, you're gonna open up into full extended power chords. Seven, nine, five, nine. Right, big power chords. You just add the ring finger and pinky to those power chords. So it's seven, 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 nine, ten. 9, 9, 9, 11, 12, 5, 5, 5, 7, 8. Same shape for all of them. Right? You get that little stop right there. moves into that part. 0 and 2, 10, 5, 5, 6. Okay, so there's two distinct ways these starts to play. When you first play it, it's very staccato. The notes are cut off. They don't ring out. Very tight. And then after that fourth time, it opens up. Right? There you go. Very fun little part, gets a little aggressive then. So then you're gonna play, um, sorry, you're gonna come out of that. So you're going to come down in dynamics. I use the volume pedal. I have the, the Ibanez uh, BL-10. had it for years. I, I love it. Um, and that allows me to act exactly like I'm just rolling down my volume knob on my guitar. Not lowering like a master volume. Right? So that allows me to kind of roll back and get a nice semi-clean sound. And that's honestly how I play all my tool. I don't play with a clean channel. Right? If I'm going to jam on these or play them live, I'm not switching channels. I'm one channel, full distortion, and using the volume pedal to roll to roll back my distortion. 
and my volume and my dynamics, right? Because there's not a lot of 100% perfectly clean riffs in Tool, and nothing's worse than, you know, you're playing and then you step on your clean click, and then everything shuts off and you change channels, it's the worst, all right? I digress. So we're gonna be up in 14th position, which means the 14th fret, and you're gonna play 14, 14, 16. <laughs> And basically you're going to do this like four times and you're going to do some pick scrapes. Have some fun with it, okay? Um, listen to how we, every time he does it, it's different. Sounds a little different, the timbre is a little different, his rhythm across the strings are a little different, okay? Listen to it, explore, all right? You're, this is where you're making art with sound, right? You're making art with noise, you're making music with noise. Um, explore these pick scrapes, put on some delay, some reverb, and see how they can become musical and they fit this style and the part that he's trying to convey here, all right? So again, 14, 14, 16, pick scrapes, and then the last time, you just pull off the open, okay? And then he's gonna start singing, above the ground, right? And you no more pick scrapes there. Um, you just pick out the chord, hit the open one, you have the melody. And those notes are 17, 16 on the D string, 17 on the A string. And then he brings back the pick scrapes. And then he section right there. And that's a really fun riff. So it's O two two two. There's your group of four. Three opens. Two threes. Oh, one open and three fives. And then your last note is on the two. Here you can play it on the, your your fifth string on the seventh fret seven two three and then five or G on your low string right or you can play it here two four five based off your fourth string. Stop you playing now right everybody drops out it's complete silence at that point and now you're gonna start just chugging. Groups of four on the two. And then you're gonna move up the 14th position and start picking those chords out again and then bending that, that 16th fret. You do that four times, you drop it down the second position, right? And then you have this riff, 
Uh, same chord. Two, two, four. I'm done. I wouldn't let them ring too much. Maybe a little bit when you're crossing strings here. Maybe a little bit when you're crossing strings there. But as you kind of pull the bend, kind of let go with the, the ringing out. Let it stand out by itself. And then you have open, open. Five, four, oh. That's your riff right there. simple straight ahead solo not a whole lot of melody going on it's more rhythmical than anything uh, the hardest part especially for maybe the, the, the beginners out there is the uh, pinch harmonics that are going on in the, in the right hand those can be hard if you can't get those out yet but just keep doing it and they'll come out and so we're gonna be on our fourth string or the D string and basically going 12 14 and you're gonna be laying your pinch harmonics as you do it you can move your hand, your right hand, a little bit, and you'll get different harmonics. I wouldn't stray too far, just a little bit. And then get your Bill Withers on here, and then you're gonna go 12, 14, 12, 14. Right there, still doing the pinch harmonics. I'm just not playing them so you can hear the notes. Give that note a, a bend and then a wiggle. And then you're going to shift to the low string, 12, 14. Same thing, bend it and then kind of add the vibrato. I like to hit that note, the, the G sharp, not the G sharp, the F sharp, but whatever, uh, the 16th fret. Back to that riff. Then you're gonna then you're gonna take that riff up into basically seventh position, and you're gonna go nine, ten, and seven. song, right? So when we move up, it's 9, 10, and 7. Then you're going to jump up and grab the E and the F chords on the 5th string. Back to the 10th fret. 7th fret. Open. Repeat. Take away the seven. Second fret. Da 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 da. And there you go, everybody. Eulogy. Awesome song. One of my favorites. Um, classic song. A lot of fun to play. Like I said, it really works on your dynamics when you're playing and your control over your sound. Right. Explore the pick scrapes. Explore the noise. So, like I said before. The PDFs and Guitar Pro can be found in the description below. As always, let me know what you come up with. Till then, I'll see you next time. Thanks a lot.